Synchronicity is a psychological concept used to describe circumstances that appear meaningfully related, yet lack a casual connection. These experiences refer to someone's belief that coincidences between events in their mind and the outside world may be causally unrelated to each other, but have some other unknown connection. In a nutshell, it just means extreme coincidences. Hi folks, I'm Johnny and welcome to The Oddest. Today, we're going to look at a story. Although coincidental, it will be hard to argue that fate didn't play a part. Whether you believe in fate or just believe that everything is left up to chance, the connections in this story is undeniable. Let's have a wee look. Edwin Booth was born in 1833 in Bel Air, Maryland. He was born into a family of actors. His father was an Englishman who had travelled to the United States to find fame and fortune, and he did just that, eventually having ten children with his wife. Six of the children would survive into adulthood, and Edwin was one of them. Keen to follow in his father's thespian footsteps, he would shadow his father acting in various venues throughout the United States. They would be performing Shakespearean plays to often sold out theatres. After his father died in 1852, the now 21-year-old Edwin flourished even more. He spent his childhood bolstering his father's hunger for fame and as such he felt that he was being held back, always used as the second man rather than commanding his own performance. Edwin would rock it into stardom, not only touring the US but taking his acting talents over the oceans to Europe and Australia. In 1864, Edwin's star shone its brightest when he put on a performance of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar alongside two of his brothers. They were also actors, John and Junius. That's Edwin in the middle there with his two brothers. It was a benefit performance and the funds raised helped to erect a statue of William Shakespeare, which to this day still stands in New York City's Central Park, just south of the promenade. By this time, Edwin was crazy famous, like Johnny Depp or The Lonely Island. He was a household name. His face was on newspapers and posters all over the place. Almost everyone knew the name Edwin Booth. In late 1864, Edwin entered a train station in New Jersey. It was late at night and he was aware it would be busier than usual due to people trying to buy the last remaining tickets for the sleeper cabins. It was all good though, because Edwin had on his wee hat and would keep his head down long enough to get into his cabin and relax. He just needed to find a way through the crowd and onto the train. The platform was mobbed as people jostled and pushed trying to get to the conductor for a ticket. The train conductor was stood firm at the entrance to the door of the coach. He was checking people's tickets as they entered. For some unknown reason, the train inexplicably began to move forward slowly, which only caused the crowd to thrust forward in fears that they would miss the chance to board before it left the platform. It was then that Edwin noticed that a well-dressed man had been waiting his turn patiently next to the train. He had been leaning against the carriage of the train as it started to move and as such he was pulled to the ground. His legs fell between the platform and the wheels of the train. Edwin sprang into action, pushing people aside as he reached down and with both hands grabbed the back of the man's collar and with all of his might yanked the guy free and pulled him back onto the platform. Once both men had gotten back to their feet, the man turned to thank his rescuer, only to be amazed. It was legendary actor Edwin Booth. He couldn't believe his lucky stars. He was so grateful and thanked him, calling him by his name so Edwin knew right away that he was recognised by him. Edwin was modest and insisted that no thanks was necessary. A few weeks later, Edwin had received a letter which was different from the thousands of letters he received over the years. This one was from the father of the man that he had saved that night back in Jersey City. The letter was from the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Edwin had saved the life of Robert Lincoln, President Lincoln's son. Robert Lincoln would later write a letter to the editor of a magazine called The Century Magazine, detailing his experience and rescue at the hands of Edwin. The incident occurred while a group of passengers were late at night purchasing their sleeping car places from the conductor who stood on the station platform at the entrance of the car. The platform was about the height of the car floor 
and there was, of course, a narrow space between the platform and the car body. There was some crowding, and I happened to be pressed by it against the car body whilst waiting my turn. In this situation, the train began to move, and by the motion, I was twisted off my feet and had dropped somewhat, with feet downward into the open space and was personally helpless. When my coat collar was vigorously seized, and I was quickly pulled up and out to a secure footing on the platform. Upon turning to thank my rescuer, I saw it was Edwin Booth, whose face was of course well known to me, and I expressed my gratitude to him, and in doing so, called him by name. Not long after this incident and subsequent letter from the president, one of Edwin's brothers and fellow actor John would become even more famous than any of his brothers. On the evening of the 14th of April in 1865, his brother would be at Ford's Theatre in Washington DC, only he wasn't there to watch the show or indeed perform. At 10.15, Edwin's brother John Wilkes Booth entered the presidential balcony where Abraham Lincoln was sat. He snuck up behind the unwitting president and shot him in the back of the head. Edwin Booth's brother had just assassinated the president, the father of the man that Edwin rescued in the months prior. As I said at the start, whether you believe in fate, synchronicity or just mere coincidences, it's undeniable that the circumstances which played out here would make anyone question fate. So here's a wee bonus for you. Years ago I remember reading about the following extreme coincidences and it's always blown my mind. See, in 1963 another beloved president was assassinated, President John F. Kennedy. What follows are some interesting similarities between both Lincoln and Kennedy and although spaced a hundred years apart, it's undeniably incredible. Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. Lincoln was elected to President in 1860. Kennedy elected to President in 1960. Lincoln has seven letters. Kennedy has seven letters. Both men were involved in civil rights. Both men married in their 30s to women aged 24 and both wives spoke fluent French. Both lost a son whilst living in the White House. Lincoln lost his 11-year-old son William and Kennedy lost his infant son Patrick. Both sons' names William Wallace, Lincoln and Patrick Bouvier Kennedy have 21 letters each, with each of those having seven letters each. Both men were shot on a Friday. Lincoln was shot on Good Friday, April 14th, 1865. Kennedy was shot on Friday the 22nd of November 1963. Both men were shot in the presence of their wives. Both men were assassinated by Southerners. Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth who was from Maryland and Kennedy was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald who was from New Orleans, Louisiana. Both of the president's successors were named Johnson. Lincoln was succeeded by Andrew Johnson. Kennedy was succeeded by Lyndon B. Johnson. Both were succeeded by Southerners. Andrew Johnson was from Tennessee. Lyndon B. Johnson was from Texas. Both successors were born in 08. Andrew Johnson was born on December 29, 1808. Lyndon B. Johnson was born August 27, 1908. Both assassins, John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald, are known by three names. Each assassin's full name is composed of 15 letters. Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theatre. Kennedy was shot in a Ford Lincoln car. Both assassins were shot and killed before the trials. After shooting Lincoln, Booth ran from the theatre and was caught in a warehouse. After shooting Kennedy, Oswald ran from a warehouse, well, book depository, it's a book warehouse, and was later caught in a movie theatre. Full confession here though, this one seems a wee bit iffy. John Wilkes Booth was actually caught in a barn, but maybe a barn is a kind of a warehouse? if you think about it. Anywho, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for holding my hand as we travel back in time for this wee one. Take care of yourselves, and as always, keep smiling. <laughs>